Good evening, everyone. How are you guys tonight? It is Thursday. You guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram page. Um, my name is Brandy. I am with Brushed by Brandy, and I'm a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. We paint live together every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. So set yourself a alarm on your phone or anything. The Facebook reminders are not very reliable. So if you like to catch these, set yourself an alarm on your phone for your favorites um, so you make it to come watch us. But um, thank you guys for hanging out with me on Thursdays. And tonight we're going to work on the piece that we started last week. Um, my husband, Sean, is here. You guys are welcome to pop on and ask any questions you have. Whether it's about this project or something that you're something else that you're working on, um, I do watch these back and I try to always come back and answer your questions if we miss them live too. So, um, what we are working on is this little three drawer chest right here, and we started this last week. And where we got with it last week is to the point that I'm going to show you. I'm going to turn this piece to the side and I'll show you where we ended at last week, and then we're going to go ahead and continue on. I already did some of the future steps so that we can move on and, and go ahead and work on it together. So let me turn this to the side for you. Would you like me to do that? We need a furniture turner. Can you hire someone for that? Isn't that my middle name? Oh, wait. <laughs> Story time. Story time. <laughs> okay. Um, so where we ended at last week is we coated this piece in Dixie Bell, um, in Dixie Bell Boss. This was a dark wood when I first started. And it's made of pine, which you can see from um, just the top itself. The top is going to have a wood stain on it right now. It's just been sanded down. Um, but you can see it's pine. It's got the, the pine knots in it. Um, the body had the same thing. Those pine knots, it was a definite bleeder. So we covered it in Dixie Belle Boss in this gray. And I chose gray boss last week because I think it's going to be a cute part of my finish. Um, and let me tell you guys where we're going with it. So. so I want to interrupt you just because it's what I like to do anyway. Sheila thinks I should get Noah out here. Oh, <laughs> you guys want to see Noah? And basically parade him, you but he's were, a little busy. You guys were so awesome today. So my son, my 13 year old son Noah just finished a piece of furniture with me last week and I posted it on my page today. He worked super hard on it, you guys, and everybody was so supportive. And it, honestly, thank you guys so much for supporting him and doing that. Because he was pretty proud of his work. But he has his best friend over right now. So I can guarantee you we are the last people he wants to hang out with. <laughs> They're inside eating. That's together. usual. And he has his best friend. Over. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we ended last week with Gray Boss. Where I'm going with this is this is the new um, uh, palette wood pattern. I always I, I always want to say barn wood pattern. And I'm going to get it wrong. But this is the palette wood pattern decoupage paper from Dixie Belle. So this is new. Um, they just added these to the line. And this one stood out to me because I think it's super cute. I'm going to show you guys the colors that are in here. So I've got my uh, barn wood color. It's got some little floral details with pinks and blues in it. Um, it's got kind of an old chippy paint look. Um, and I really love this. So we are going to add this to the front of my piece. We're going to make this piece look like old barn wood. Um, and I thought that the gray boss peeking through underneath the creamy white color that I'm using would be really cute. So that's why I chose that. So, um, let's go on from here, from where we ended last week with putting our gray boss on. Um, and you can go back and find that video on the Dixie Bell paint page if you want to watch that and catch up with us. Whoa. I know. What's it's going on here? Get low. Get low. Okay, so the color that I'm using um, over this gray boss is Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. And I love this drop cloth because it's like the perfect creamy aged vintage white color. You can see it next to the barnwood paper. See, there we go. Barnwood's palette wood. Palette wood, Brady. Um, there is a difference, just so you know. I know. I, well, I know because we have pallets galore <laughs> outside and they don't look anything like a barn. We should build a barn out of our pallets. Okay, so I'm going to use my Dixie Belle Mini. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little mist of water, and we're just going to go ahead and catch this side up to show you guys how I got to where I am on the front. Now, really quick, just to answer Sheila, no, if he sells it, I get the money. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't get anything. Yeah, no, we just like <laughs> to work our children, but not let them profit from it. It's a 50-50 split, but we don't get any of it. 50% goes in the bank, 50% he can spend. Yeah, that's, that's our deal. He's done a few pieces with me right now, so he knows when he wants to buy something. This is my 13-year-old son, Noah. 
Um, and this is kind of how we operate. If he wants to buy something that's more than your average, like $25 that he has from his birthday money or whatever in his wallet, um, he doesn't come to me and say, hey, mom, can I borrow, you know, $100? I really want to buy this, whatever. Um, he comes and says, mom, I need a piece because I really want to save up for whatever, whatever it is he wants at the time. And, um, and he wanted something. And so, so that was, that's our deal. He knows he can spend half of it and the rest goes in the bank. Um, he keeps out enough that he can go buy his next piece. He has to buy all the hardware and things himself that might be needed. Um, we, we build in a fake materials cost for him. Um, for using a portion of my paints and stuff. And and I walk through it step by step. So so I it has to be at a time when I can fit it in because it really is a lot of time for me to work with him. I think we're doing it all wrong. I think what we should do is he should just do the stuff to pay for his college education that's in, you know, oh, six yeah. years. I agree. Like That's he, what I think. Nobody he, mentioned that, but I you know all of a being sudden, a concerned father. All of a sudden we're gonna have a child who's like, Mom, Dad, I wanna go to trade school. <laughs> Which I would not be disappointed with. He's he's very um, in, mechanically inclined. He's very likes to work with his hands. Um, so he picks up the stuff pretty easily, and the kid's got a work ethic on him that I could not be prouder of. He was out here with me every day, determined to finish that furniture piece, and he, he even came out and uh, and took pictures without me. And he came and said, "Mom, look, I took pictures of my piece," and I was like, "Well, let's go take some other pictures together." <laughs> <laughs> but he did a good job because he chose the right time of the day. He had paid attention to when I take my pictures and came out here and picked some stuff out of my staging closet, which we did use in the final pictures. We just talked about what changes, you know, could make it a little bit better. So he's pretty proud and I hope it solves for him because he has been anxiously waiting. Mom, mom, anything on my piece yet? Mom, anything on my piece yet? Like, hang hey, out, kiddo. It doesn't happen that fast. You know, it takes time. Okay, so color. Uh, I'm using Dixie Belle drop cloth, and this is going over my base of the gray boss. It's going to take me two coats to cover that gray boss. So a few things you'll notice when I'm painting my second coat, I like to use a little mist of water. This just lubricates my surface. Some people prefer to mist their brush. I like to mist my surface. That's just personal preference. Um, and then I make sure that I use long, even strokes. So on these panels on the side, I am going to cover this panel in the... the barnwood paper, and then my drop cloth will hang out around the edges. Um, so you want to make sure when you're painting uh, that you do add a coat, under, a coat of paint under your decoupage paper because um, they do become a little bit translucent when you lay them. You will see whatever's underneath. You can choose a light or a dark color depending on what colors are in your paper, what undertones you want to cast underneath that um, little bit of a translucent paper. So consider that when you're choosing what color you want to put under your decoupage paper. Nice. Someone mentioned that they're going to trade school as far as, uh, let's see, for refinishing furniture. Oh, yeah. That, ooh, that should That's be sweet. a trade school. That should be a trade school. That's genius. Yep. There you go. That is genius. Yeah, that's true, huh? He did. He did. He just got. He just got a full education at a uh, Brush by Brandy University. He owes me full tuition now. Okay, so this is my first coat. It will take a second coat of this, but let's go ahead and turn this to the front of the piece where I already have two coats on the front. And that about catches us up to how we got here. That's the only thing that I've done since uh, since you left last week. Can you turn that side for me? Mostly so I don't have to get back up. I don't want to hit that piece behind me, though. I will cry if something happens to that. Me too. Okay, speaking of that piece behind me, guys, every Friday I put out a YouTube video on my YouTube channel, Brush by Brandy, over on YouTube. I just have a couple touch-ups on this paint right here that I'm just going to do really quick. No, sorry, Brittany, no financial aid. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, horrible financial aid, and definitely no scholarships coming from this. Um... I have a new video coming out on my YouTube channel tomorrow. Do you guys know what it is? Finally, you've waited so long. It's going to be um, doing faux marble with resin. It's um, faux Carrera marble grays and whites in marble, uh, all poured in resin and a little bit of Dixie Belle paint. So if you guys don't already, go follow my YouTube channel at Brushed by Brandy. 
need a screwdriver to get these drawers out. Um, just trying to do everything around here. No, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm trying to be prepared, but I forgot my screwdriver. <laughs> I thought that was coming at me like tip first. Okay. Um, I gotta get this. How about the water bottle up there? Yeah. <laughs> it's going that's, that's got me a little nervous. Okay, I'm gonna pull this drawer out. Let's see. How do I want to work on this? I'm gonna pull it out and do it this way with it. Let's go this way. I think it'll be easier to work on. Can you see if I work this way? How do I kind of tip it like this? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, so let's talk about the decoupage papers. The first thing you want to do when you're working with these papers is they do have a little bit of a border around them. Okay? All right, guys. I'm going to put you over here. Okay, one last thing. Oh, my gosh. Can you grab me? Um... <laughs> There's a cabinet door right there. Just grab me that cabinet. Can I just grab this for I just need a hard surface here? to cut on. So these papers have a little border around them. So you can see it around the bottom and around the edges. I need to trim that part off. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So I'm going to take a hard surface. This, this I'm going to use a cabinet door. And I usually do a couple of them at a time. So I'll make sure that they're all lined up. Okay. I can even use this corner of my cabinet door as a square. Get this one in a good little. There we go. There's the money. All right. So I get them all nice and lined up. I'm just using the corner of this cabinet door as a square. And I'm going to take a ruler. I have three sheets of the paper right now. These come in packs of three. So the package that when you get them, this. Um, takes three pieces and I took the measurements and I roughly calculated that I'll need about nine pieces to do around this full piece as much as I want to do. So about three packs of the paper would do this entire look that I'm doing. I'm going to take a ruler and then I have an exacto knife, just a razor knife. When you order a set, how many? Three pieces of this paper come in the package. There you go, Sheila. Um, this particular <laughs> paper is uh, 17 by 12. 17 by 12, there's two different sizes of paper. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and run my razor knife. Now these are pretty thin paper, so it doesn't take a lot of pressure. I'm just gonna run my razor knife and I'm gonna trim off all this excess. And right here, I'm doing three pieces at a time. So this is gonna go, it goes pretty quick. Just a ruler, running a razor knife. And then let me show you. And then I'm gonna have to if you were to think things. or guess the overall coloring in this, what would be the coloring in it? Brown, in gray? The, in the papers? Yes. Um, so let me show you. I'll just because it may be tough on camera. Yeah, I'll get you as close as I can on camera. But I see in here there's some whites in here. You could go either drop cloth, sawmill gravy, uh, fluff would be pretty with it. There's pinks in here like tea rose. There's some soft blue. You could go either haint blue or dusty blue. Is it blue? It haint blue. Okay, I'm just checking. So that one coming from a mile away. You gotta be quicker on that. You pause for a second. All right, so I got one side. Let's go ahead and do these other sides. And this will give me three sheets that are already trimmed. I'll be sh three sheets in. Three sheets to the, to the wind. wind. Uh huh? Yeah. Brought your A game. My mind. Look at that. Granny's bringing funny. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to put you out of work. All right, there's oh, that you side. <laughs> don't you worry. Thanks for that vote of yeah. confidence there. <laughs> you just keep painting. <laughs> it's a good thing. You, you do whatever that it's is. I think she's pretty. Pay no attention to what's going on over behind the curtain. All right, we'll do this side. You could do this with scissors too. This goes a little bit faster just because I can do multiple sheets and I get nice straight lines. Oh, you know what? If you have one of those uh, those paper cutters like they used to have at oh schools, get one of those. Like if you see one of those at like those a yard sale, snatch that bad boy up, bring that one home. With a little bit of blood on the end of it? <laughs> yeah. Whoa, what How many of, times what I caught myself? Did you go to? <laughs> oh, you brought out the ruler. It made me a little concerned too. <laughs> Used to get that on the knuckles. I just missed a little corner here, and instead of lining it up with my ruler again, I'm just going to cut it with my scissors. All right, I'm almost there. Oh my god, up and down, up and down. Did you get. 
Huh? You, you know paper has four sides, right? What? Yeah. I gotta yeah. clap this out. There's too many syllables. <laughs> four sides. What are we talking? Huh? Dog show. Not in my face. All right. Last one. I'm just gonna tear off all these. Wow, if you on here actually have one of the paper cutters. You huh? do. I need to get one. I really should just have one. I have a little one that for scrapbooking. You remember when scrapbooking used to be popular? I, I never did it, but I got all the stuff for it. We have three boys. I don't I, know. I thought it looked fun, and then I was like, wait a minute, I gotta print out my photos for this? I don't think so. You'll come out here and it'll look like ninja fruit. They're all slicing tomatoes <laughs> yeah, and stuff on it. This is true. Someone would chop someone else's finger off because they got in an argument. I was talking to Malia today. She has one boy, and I was telling her that it's just a it's just a mathematical fact that boys just diminish each other's common sense when they're together. What? I know. I need to tell you that includes you. you. What? I've seen you hang out with your friends before. Oh my gosh. I don't agree. <laughs> okay. I now have four, sh or what I do? Did I do three? Oh, I was hoping I did four accidentally. So I have three sheets of my paper all trimmed around the edges. So this will get me through a while. And then I decided that on this, I want to run these vertically. This paper um, has a repeat pattern on it that connects either vertically or horizontally. I think it could work either <laughs> way, but I think it would be cute to run these vertically. So let's go ahead and work with one. You have too many over. ladies agreeing with you on the uh, multiple males no, together. You know I'm right. I say we're super smart by ourselves, but make it a plural <laughs> issue. <laughs> That's yeah, a bit of a problem. Smart. You're super smart by yourselves, too. Yeah, we think that. All right, and then I can decide from here. I think I'm going to hide my uh, edge of my paper right in this little nook right here. And then I'll just trim off this edge over here. That'll be easier than trying to trim the inside edge. I'm going to choose to trim the outside edge. So what am I going to use to attach my paper with? I'm going to use Dixie Belle Satin Clear Cup. Um, I like to use satin for decoupage. And um, I like it over, say, Gator Hide because Gator Hide sets up a little bit quicker. Um, and so you have less time to work with the paper. Satin has a nice little, little bit longer open length. Um, and so it's really nice to use for deck wash. I'm going to use this underneath my paper as my adhesive, and I'm going to use it over the top of my paper as my sealer. Um, so it gets to do double duty with just one product. You guys see sometimes I will use wallpaper paste for decoupage. Generally, when I prefer wallpaper paste is for thicker papers. Um, I like it for thicker papers because it lets me reposition them a little bit. Thicker papers can take a little bit longer to lay. You have to kind of roll them out. This thinner paper is going to lay super easily. Um, and one thing to consider with wallpaper paste, it can yellow. So keep that in mind too. So I'm going to take a little bit of my satin clear coat just on one of my brushes and I'm going to go ahead and give myself a nice coat over the top of my paint. Um, I lay it on I don't want it to dry super fast. So I want a little bit of excess, but you also don't want it, you know, enough that it's going to run and drip and pool and all that stuff. So a fairly nice coat of it. Let's see if I have something I can stick under here. I want to keep my drawer tilted a little bit for you guys. Okay, I'm going to put a can of wax right here and see if it stays. Okay, and then I'm going to take my paper and I can kind of decide, do I want to lay it this way? Do I want to lay it this way? You know, I don't think there's any right or wrong way. I'm going to go ahead and go at it like this. That's wrong. <laughs> you read all the directions? I'm going to let, line it up right at the top of my drawer. Try to get it nice and straight. So does it matter whether it's satin or flat? Uh, flat works too. Flat's great too. Flat has a similar open time to uh, to the satin, so you could definitely use flat as well. Okay, once you start getting your paper, once it comes in contact with moisture, your paper is going to start uh, expanding a little bit. So I'm going to go through it. I'm not setting it down until I know it's where I want it. I'm just going to kind of place it down as I go, rather than just placing the whole thing down. And then I'm going to use something called a brayer. And I've got a few of them. So a brayer is a rolling, go, a rolling pin tool. 
and I've got a whole bunch of them. Um, I like them all for different reasons, but the main point is just have a brayer. They roughly all work the same. This is actually my favorite one, although it drives me nuts because the roller part always falls off. And then I'm just going to gently roll out this paper with my brayer. And this is going to push out any air bubbles that are underneath it. It gets it nice and smooth. It's going to make sure I have full contact with that satin clear coat underneath. I want to make sure that I roll it out right up into this corner. I'm going to use my fingers to make sure I get all the way that little edge down. You want to make sure your edges are well adhered because those are the parts that are going to, that would come loose. That also is going to push out any excess clear coat that I have will get pushed out around the edges of my paper. So that's my excess right there. And then to cut this, I have a couple options. I can use sandpaper. So you can take a, this is uh, one of the Surf Prep Rad Pads. These are also available from Dixie Bell. And I can just lightly sand at the edges of this paper. And that's gonna score it so that it wants to tear right along that line. Okay, I'm just, I'm going super light at it because I don't want to cause it to wrinkle or um, I just want to kind of create a little weakness in the paper right there and then I can just go like this and it just will pull right off. Super light hand at that, get right up here to the corner. Where'd you get your bear tool? Um, you can get them on Amazon. They're a craft store item at your local... I don't know, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever, you can get them there. Um, they are, what section do I usually find them in? I think in the scrapbooking section. My favorite section, the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely, <laughs> get not, them in the they're definitely not out there. You got to go in. Um, I have a brayer in my Amazon shop. You can find a link to my Amazon shop. It's pinned to uh, my first post on my Facebook page. All right, this is my piece that's left over. This piece is going to go down to my next drawer. Okay, so I'm gonna hang on to this. This is the piece for my next drawer underneath this. But this is nice and smooth. Now that I've taken that piece off, I'll just make sure that I have my piece all laid. All right. I just scratched my paint a little bit right there with the tip of my brayer. <sighs> My feet are falling asleep too. What? I know. Let's all go to sleep. Okay. <laughs> all right. How cute is that though? So um, now I'm going to come over and do this next portion. So let's go ahead and do this next portion right here. Um, and I'm going to run my paper. My seam is going to fall nicely into this crevice right here. And I usually will try to hide my seams when I can. I'm going to run it this way. But if I wanted to, I could, these both have the floral on this edge, and I could work it that way. But I'm going to go ahead and let it start over again with the pattern and do it this way. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hide the edge of this paper right down in the seam. Um, anytime I can hide a seam, I prefer to. This paper is going to go underneath the clear coat, which essentially encapsulates my paper. It's going to be protected underneath the clear coat, so it's going to be nice and secure. It becomes a permanent part of your piece. If you ever question how strong decoupage is, attaching paper to a piece of furniture, try to remove it, and that will tell you how strong your decoupage paper is. You don't want to have to remove it. It becomes part of your piece, you guys. This is a permanent finish on your piece. So I'm going to turn this a little bit so I have better access to the front because I don't want to mess this up. All right, can you see if I do that? All right, I'm just going to kind of dry fit it just so I know what I'm doing. We're going to get all up in your business. All right, you always are. You guys are so nosy. You know what? Because It's because this has a weird glide on it and it sticks out on the back. You want like a towel or something for them? And sit it on? No. Okay, so she's using my knee. All right, and then I'm, I'm kind of ready. I have an idea what I'm doing, so I'm going to give myself another coat of my satin clear. One thing that's optional, you can put, I can go ahead and clear coat over the top of this paper, but I usually let my clear coat dry, and then I'll come back and add my, um, I let my clear coat underneath dry, and then I will come back and top coat it. When you top coat it, 
Um, this is not reactivate. So if you've ever done decoupage with Mod Podge, oh my gosh, this is so annoying. You're just gonna call it Sean? Yeah, this dresser is called Sean. <laughs> I've never been one to name my pieces. I just don't well, we're know. starting it up now. Yeah, just for this one, Sean. Would you like me to hold it? Only if it starts falling. Oh man, let me hear. Let me just hold it. Yeah, that would. Yeah. Just when I'm putting this paper huh? down, I really don't want to mess with it. Really, a hand model. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get this paper right down in this corner. I want to line it up at the top. I'm gonna, once I've got a good placement, I'm gonna kind of press that down and then I'm gonna run this across the top and see if I'm straight. Just slightly off, so I'm gonna make that correction on my side too. There we go. All right, and now that I've got a good solid line, I'm gonna go ahead and start pressing my paper down. Is really tiring. So this paper is actually pretty durable. One thing I'll say about this paper is it's pretty re repositionable. Like if I felt like I needed to, I could pull this up and reposition it. I don't want to. I try to not play with my papers because you always take a chance that you're going to tear it or create weaknesses in it. Um, I'm just using my finger and it's it's got a little ridge right here and I'm going to run it in run the paper into that ridge. When the paper is wet, it wants to stretch a little bit. And then once it starts to dry, it's going to um, tighten back up from that stretch. So I stretch it a little bit, and then once it once it um, dries, it's going to pull any like imperfections or wrinkles will pull back out when it dries. And then I'm going to take my brayer. You doing okay? Yeah, I was pulling it away from the piece. I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to roll it out. Get nice contact. This curve right here is kind of hard to roll out. All right, my excess uh, clear coat has pushed out the top, just a tiny little bit of excess. And then let's go ahead and sand off this bottom piece and this will go down to my next drawer. Um, when you're sanding, if you can, you, if you pull in just one direction, if, you, if you're going at it like a saw, it's going to pull your paper every which direction. I'd be a little concerned if you were sanding like that anytime. I'm just being super gentle with it. It's just enough to score it. This is a pretty thin paper. I don't need to be really aggressive with the sanding. Right, and then I could just kind of pull it and it's going to just tear right along that line in a perfect line. And I've got a perfectly straight cut right along my drawer edge and this one will come down and it's going to be on my next drawer. All right, so that looks really pretty. I am going to add a little bit of clear coat right into the seam right here because I want this paper to lay in that seam nice and flat. So let me show you what I mean. I had said earlier that you, you can apply your clear coat. If I wanted to come back even before my clear coat underneath it was dry, I could come back and put my clear coat over top. Um, I generally wait and I let it dry underneath, but you can definitely do it either way. That's, a, that's I think, a personal preference thing. Right, so I just, that one's clear coated, this one's not, no right or wrong way to do it. Okay, so what you're going to see right here is I'm going to have a seam. Let's go ahead and seam this paper together. Are you still okay holding it? I'm fine. Okay. I'm just going to see comments. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry guys, Sean's holding this drawer because it's, do you want to try a towel? I can try one and see if I don't care. That's fine. As long as the people are a little patient, then we're good. Everybody good? Sean's holding Sweet. the drawer for me guys so I can So I can't see the camera. On camera. So uh, go ahead and yell. Throw me a towel. Let me see if I huh? can make like a base for it that it will sit in. It's got like a um, plastic knob on the back of the glide so it won't sit flat. Kind of crunch it up though. Alright. 
Are we good? No? <laughs> Thanks, Brittany. Okay. No comment. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to make a seam right here. And then this one, I'm not going to be able to hide my seam of my paper right here. I could choose to cut it if I wanted to <laughs> and just run a full piece. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. But let's go ahead and seam this right here. And then I can choose if I want to make that cut or not. So I'm, I'm going to choose to do the same thing. I could either seam them this way. And let's see, there is a pattern repeat there. It's slightly offset. But I'm setting it, I'm running them this way. So my next pattern would be this direction. So let's go ahead and coat this part right here in my clear coat. So this is just my satin clear coat. And I'm just going to run it, run it right up to this edge. I'm not sure right now if I want to cut it in that seam. Because no matter what, it's going to take me the same amount, the same number of pieces to do this. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Picking up what I don't want to put it down. No, you don't really care. Huh? All right. And I'm going to run this right up to the edge. So I want to make sure I get these nice and tight together without overlapping, but just butting up against each other. And then I want to make sure that I get it nice and straight across the top of my drawer. That's Ooh. pretty good. All right, so, and then I'm going to press down on this seam and slowly lay my paper down as I go until it gets right down into this crevice right here. And then I'm at the point where I could choose if I want to cut this paper right here because I know that another full piece will cover that. What do you think? I'm kind of on the fence about it. Or do I just let there be another seam? Yes. I'm I'm thinking just I, I'm thinking I'll, I'll just hide it right here. Idea. Then I have I have one less seam. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do that. So I'm gonna take my here, ruler. Before you do that, grab another piece of paper and sit it here so you can see what it looks like. Or see if it looks too busy for you. I know you like to cut and then figure it out well, later. Well, what's kind of cool is yeah. is the where this paper is ending is the same pattern that this one begins I just on. You to make sure. So I yeah. could run this and it would look like it was continuing into that seam. So I think I'm good to do it that way. So let's go ahead and cut this piece of paper. Um, I'm going to put my ruler gotcha. right here in the seam, and I can't really see without sticking my head right in the way. And I'm just going to run my razor knife. You want to make sure you have a nice sharp blade for this. It really helps you guys. Just make sure your razor knife is nice and sharp before you start this project. All right. And so that should loose, have loosened up this piece right here. So I can, I can still use this. I'm going to use this because I am going to run this paper up the sides of my piece inside that frame. So I'll still use all these scraps. I still come back and piece them all together. And then let's get rid of this bottom. And we'll take a look at how these look seam together. What's in the way? What's in the way? Bottoms. I'm going to hold this down. I'm sitting at a really bad angle to be doing this. But like I don't want to want block the camera. All right. Down that little edge. Yeah, yeah, right down that edge. I'm just going to cut this right in the seam right here. And then this little funky spot right here. Let's check this turn. Let's see if I'm. Yeah. I just gently pull at the paper and it's going to want to naturally tear right where I scored it. But some spots like here, I need to sand it a little bit more. All right. Okay, there we go. So this is what I have left and this I can use, this will be uh, for the drawer underneath and then I'll end up with this piece as a cut portion that I could use when I run down my sides. So save all your scrap pieces till you're done completely with the project. You never know when you're gonna need them. All right, let's come do this one last sheet on this drawer here. Do you ever uh, moisten the paper? To let it cut easier? The only time that I moisten the paper is if it's a thicker paper. This is a pretty thin <laughs> yes, paper. <sure. laughs> Thumb injury, Sean? Yes. One, two, three. Oh, that was my three sheets that I cut. I need to cut another one. <sighs> I know. 
This part's kind of a pain. All right. Here, you want to hand me that? Want my paper to go trim? Dang it. All right, let's trim some more of the... I'll um, go with no. Because I need another sheet. That was three sheets that I've used so far, and I only trimmed the X or the edges on three sheets. I'm going to make sure these are lined up, all facing the right direction before I cut multiple papers at one time. So whether you start it in the middle and branch out or start from a side and go, it's just preference, right? I think it also really depends on, the your, piece? on your piece, yeah. too. Hide a seam where you can hide a seam. If you've got a crack, like this was perfect to hide the seam right here in this crevice. This crevice right here would be another place I could hide a seam. I try to not put them down the center of a drawer, but you can see, you guys, this is where the seam on this is, right here. This paper seams together really, really well. Don't worry, there is no story behind the thumb injury. Not, not super exciting. I was working on the motorhome. It's about all I got. Oh, yeah. He has a big Did old... not anticipate being a, you know, a camera model. He has a Band-Aid on. Well, it also has scotch tape. Because <laughs> yeah. the Band-Aid nice. wouldn't... Yeah. <laughs> Alright, okay. I just put clear coat over it so you can't... But, I mean, there's a seam right here and you cannot even tell there's a seam right there. It. This is a really nice paper to work with because it's got a lot of pattern and things going on. So I, you, you can't tell where the seams are at all. So that looks really good. All right, let's trim this paper. I want to get this, at least this drawer done. And then I will go on and- Oh, I'll, Brittany, I almost, I have liquid Band-Aid. I almost does, threw some uses, liquid Band-Aid on her. He uses liquid Band-Aid all the time, which is just shy of super glue. That's what she has, oh, super said. glued as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so close. We're super classy around here. I don't get the liquid band-aid thing. Oh man, that's the heaven. <laughs> no. You don't cut yourself like I do. This is true. Once again, remember that point about boys? Uh, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Very smart. You negate each other's common sense. Yeah. I have a house of boys, so I think combined, like we're negative. We're in the negative over here. Could you put a transfer over the yes, paper? Yes, you can. I thought this would be really cute. Okay, so imagine you've got this barnwood look and your piece looks like it's made See? of full barnwood. Putting the sunflower transfer over would be super cute on this paper. No, you guys are reading my mind. Sheila, I'm right there with you. Paper tape instead of band-aids when I was a kid, duct tape even. You got to get creative. That's because we were poor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We didn't have band-aids. Band-aids were fancy. <laughs> Mom, I just cut myself. Yeah. I don't need a tourniquet. I'm giving up. I'm just going to cut this. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a hurry right now. Because we're... Let's see. If I just do, and then I've got this edge, and then I can do the rest. Post camera. That gives me enough to work with. I know the trimming part is not cool to watch. It's like I hate doing lives where all I'm doing is is prep. Those are boring lives. All right. You need me to hold the drawer. Uh, no, this one should be pretty easy. Okay. okay. And so this is going to be my next piece, and then I didn't trim this edge right here because can you see I'm gonna it's gonna trim off, and this piece it's so little I'm not even gonna reuse that, so it'll just be discarded, and then I can cut my bottom after it's from here but that's going to match up perfectly so now i've dry fit my paper i'm going to go ahead and put on my clear coat it's my satin clear i'm going to cover right over the top of this paper as it goes into this corner and that's just because i want this to lay right into that corner and i'm going to ask the paper to stretch a little bit so that i can put it into that little curve oh it's yoga paper thing that i've got Oh, yeah, it is yoga paper. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. It's actually rice paper. A little downward. I mean, you know. I don't know. I like rice way better than yoga. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Amen, sister. <laughs> totally for my carbs. Yep. All right, so ample coat of my satin clear coat. Yoga. Never met her. Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we like to paint over here, okay? We're not the fitness <laughs> crowd. 
All right, I think this paper is cool too because it also has little, you can see the woven pieces. Like this one's got a kind of a cool spot on the back, but it's got little woven textures in it and it looks really pretty for these, you know, kind of rustic, um, natural looking finishes. All right, and I'm gonna run this right up into the corner. Run it. Across my top, make sure it's nice and straight. You gotta be a hype man. These 90 degree angles are kind of a challenge. You wanna make sure it's straight in both directions. All right, let's see if I'm straight across the top. Ooh, ramen. Oh yeah. That was for my paper, but ramen's good too. What are you, macho man? <laughs> oh yeah. Now I feel like a Slim Jim. All right, and then I just kind of push my paper out as I'm, as I'm laying it at the same time. I don't just drop it and let it fall. It's just easier to lay it before it gets wet. Once it gets wet, it's harder to work with. All right, that's good. And let's go ahead and roll it out. This sprayer has these little knobs, and so it makes me nervous. I don't want to run this up against the corner, whereas this one's kind of flat. This one's also a little bit harder. They're each different, but you know, I like them all for different reasons. All right, so that's good. Oh, and... Dang it, Lori, stolen ramen. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Lori, we laughed until we <sighs> cried that night. That's probably, that's probably one of my favorite stories. That was one of the I most just fun lives, too. There's a story there, you guys. There's a live on my YouTube channel. We told that story. It's one of my favorite stories, too. 20 years later, still a favorite story. Um, Nobody's asked since <laughs> earlier, but speaking just because I, I enjoy punishment, apparently. Um, speaking of story time, what's my little name? <laughs> it's kind of like, like a, that's like a who's on first joke. Yeah. Could we say, Except nobody was on like, first. Can we say, what's, what's your middle name? Huh? What is your middle name? <laughs> no? Oh, man. Are you guys Love wanna, you, Mom. You guys want to hear the story of Sean's middle name? <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, okay, man. we got to hurry, though, because I need Yeah, you got to go. go. Go, okay. go, go. I'll let you do it. Well, I can't just say it and not, yeah. and, and not tell the story. Yeah, now. yeah. Okay, Sean's middle name, you guys. Uh, Four letters. <laughs> Sound it out. Well, Sean's mom didn't give him a middle name. He, did, he didn't have a middle name. So naturally, on his birth certificate, you would type, you would write out none, right? So do you guys know what Sean's middle name is? Legal middle name. <laughs> Sean's legal middle name on his birth certificate is N-O-N-E. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why it's funny. So, heads up, if you're having a child and don't want to give them a middle name, you want to leave that section blank. Because it will haunt them the rest of their life. All right, and that's my paper. I can go ahead and trim this upper end. Yes, Robin. N M N. That's all you put. If you want to get creative. Yeah. I mean, I three guess, letters. I guess thankfully she didn't put like not applicable. That would have been worse. Oh. That would have been worse. I mean, it gets worse these days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not applicable. So, yeah, we've got a few good letters. Yeah. Though. There you go. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. That's, for that. that's why I get invited to parties. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why? We haven't been invited to a party in a while. I know. Everybody knows a, that joke. It's been at least a year. Everybody knows that joke. That's why. It's been a COVID kind of year. I get a lot of Zoom parties. All right, you guys, we just coated this whole drawer. So let's put, the, I'm going to put this back in the piece so you guys can see what it looks like. And then you can kind of envision the direction that I'm going. These are long <laughs> drawers. So. Okay. Am I off on my glide? Oh, oh my gosh. All right, well, my drawer glide is off. You guys are gonna have to imagine. I don't wanna try to push it down. I'm gonna scratch my tape. This is where I'm going with this. How cute is this? So what I'm thinking is I can choose if I wanna put the paper on these little 
guys right here. I don't know. Help me out. Should I leave these Bring spaces it. in between the drawer, or would you continue the paper so it's continued? All the way down or spacing? Yeah. Yeah, and I did not take care of this piece. I've got a whole bunch of touches. You didn't take care of that carpet either. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, but that is so cute. This paper is so cute, and up against the drop cloth is really pretty. So I could see it either way. Either this frame around the drawer would kind of frame out the wood, or do I let it be look so like So far, it's a leave it. So leave, you're going to coat it? Leave it leave it painted. <laughs> leave it painted. Is that what you guys are saying? Yes. I'm just going to force that drawer in. I'll regret it later because now I'm going to have to touch uh, up the paint on the oh, top. Oh, really? You are? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be the one that gets it out. But do you see what I mean? Whether I want to put the paper onto this part or do I just leave this white and then my paper starts again down here? What looks cuter? I like it either way. I can't decide. There's a couple that say uh, put some more on, but I mean, I'm not calling you a name or anything, but... So from here, my next step is going to be to coat this all in clear coat. So like I said, you can wait for your clear coat underneath to dry, or I can go ahead and put my clear coat over while it's still wet. I already put that up clear coat, so I'm just going to make this piece match. I usually let it dry though. Um, that way it has the time to flatten out and everything, but I mean, Leave it. If, if you lay it pretty clear or pretty flat, it doesn't really matter. It does. It matters to you? Yes. <laughs> I didn't realize you were so sensitive about this. This is a really nice paper to light. It lays incredibly easy, you guys. Even though it's a tissue paper because it's got that woven rice texture, it's not fragile like a lot of tissue papers can be. It seems really nicely. It's got continuous patterns going either horizontally or I can run it vertically. If I've got a tall piece, I can connect them end to end that way too. So it's really versatile. Um, so you guys, that's going to be our look on this. I'm going to go ahead and get this paper laid on the next drawer. You guys will have to come back and find out next week if I decide to do these or not. I don't know. Can't decide. I already know. <laughs> You're going to freaking coat it. I can't decide. This is how it works. I, I like the drop cloth up against this paper though. It's really cute. Okay. I, I realize how this marriage works. Coat it. Because <laughs> then, then nothing's going to get done to it. Yeah. All right, you guys, so if you guys come back next week, I'll go ahead and have the paper done, and then we can put our finishing touches on this piece, and we will have finished this whole look over the last three weeks together. So last week we did the prep, um, cleaning, putting our boss on. Um, this week we did our base coat and then putting our paper over, and next week we'll go ahead and finish it up together. All right, super cute. Um, everything that I use tonight is available at the link that I put up above in the post, either the drop cloth paint, the gray boss that I used underneath. This paper is also available there under the Bells and Whistles tab. Bells and Whistles is the name of the accessory line from Dixie Bell. So Bells and Whistles on the website will take you to the papers, the new transfers that just came out, stencils, all that stuff. Um, you can also use the link I put above in the post to find your local retailer and they, a lot of them have these products in the shop if you wanna go in and check out these or any of the other, other patterns that are available. Um, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for supporting Noah. Go follow me on my YouTube channel. I've got a video coming out tomorrow on making faux marble using resin. Um, that will premiere tomorrow morning on Could Friday. Could have used that when we were doing the kitchen. Friday morning. Thanks a lot. You know, it would have saved us a ton. Yeah. It's really pretty. It's really pretty. Just saying. Um, and I will see you guys here next week at 9 p.m. Eastern.